put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Replicant Mood Review Scientists create a clone, his every pair of genes a hand-me-down. The clone is of the Torch Garot, a serial killer. And the reason they clone him is to help stop this serial killer. And thus the clone is teamed up with a cop and the cop is supposed to help basically jog his genetic memory and use the psychic link, yes, that the clone and Garrett have to help find him and stop him. And they teach him, they teach the clone some martial arts and maybe Garot knows some as well. Maybe there'll be some perfectly symmetrical fighting between them. The, the reason this movie and the clone himself is referred to as Replicant is because Blade Runner is an amazing movie and they desperately want you to think that this is this has anything resembling that level of quality. It does not. This is part two of what I call the Is Cloning Scary trilogy of genre films of the early 2000s. The first being The Sixth Day and the third being Godsend. This is directed by Rinko Lam, who has also made a number of action films set in China about things in China being on fire. A city, a school, several prisons. He also directed Jean-Claude Van Damme in Maximum Risk, which also has two Van Dams, although not at the same time. And these two are the only two of his of Ringo Lamb's films that I have watched, but he is clearly a quite capable action director. And I haven't really, I, I just haven't come upon any of his other films. And this has two writers, one of whom has also directed his own scripts. Jean-Claude Van Damme really has only been in a few really great action films. Most of his films are simply okay, but we do get to see him do the martial arts that he does excel at in real life. And this is the last Jean-Claude Van Damme movie that I own, and thus I am I don't really have plans to review more of his films in the you know not not currently that might change. And it has been noted that you know this doesn't necessarily offer up a lot and you know in adding to this kind of the the debate about cloning it's fairly one dimensional and it is low budget and low thought exploration of a really interesting idea as others have noted some say that this film is incredibly stupid Others go so far as to say avoid it like the plaque. Others note, and I agree with this, it is a direct-to-video film, and for that it's really not too bad. And this has Van Damme playing both the hero and the villain. And, you know, it's one of his handful or so of films where he plays two roles that are related in some way. You know, twice it was twins, here it's a clone. I I haven't watched The Order and I couldn't just like immediately figure out exactly how the two 
if they are really related, if they're supposed to be like, you know, if, if one is the descendant, the, you know, far down the line descendant of the other or what exactly. And the clone is very meek, has basically the mind of a child. Some say that that makes him feel, come across as stupid, that the, the, the cop says so as well. I would say he does quite well as, you know, this kind of mind of a child thing. And there are times where we're supposed to find the the clone creepy. I refuse to refer to him as replicant. I just yeah, it's it's utterly unnecessary. Yeah, like I already said, it's it's purely to make you think that it's in some way connected. And it really isn't. Soldier, the Paul W. S. Anderson film, has more of a connection to Blade Runner than this movie. The yeah, there, there are times where the clone is, you know, kind of creepy and you're like, wait, is he actually, you know, is he actually going to hurt the, the cop? Is he going to hurt people? And in this, you know, in these scenes, Traveler Van Damme does really well as well. And, you know, he's supposed to be, like, really scary, intimidating, intense as Garrett. And I wouldn't have thought, you know, but... Yeah, he actually does really well. Someone put it that sometimes the worst actors make the best bad guys, which, yeah, that's it, in this instance for sure. And he has long hair, so you know he's evil. This is not the movie, however, where he has a glorious mullet. That is Hard Target, which I don't think I've seen. I used, I used to be a really big Van Damme fan back in the day. I, I don't think I thought that the movies were actually good or that he was a good actor, but yeah, just those those kicks, it, yeah. And so, so yeah, I watched every Van Damme movie I could get a hold of, and yeah, not sure that I watched Hard Target. I did rather like him as Villain in Expendables 2, so... Yeah, and he, you know, some, someone noted that it's, it, you know, with the right director, Van Damme can really act. And, yeah. Now, Michael Rooker plays Jake, angry cop. You know, when, when you hire Michael Rooker, you want him to rook, obviously. So, yeah, angry cop, and he's been hunting Garrett for three years, but he retires very early in the film and he is called up by Garrett and you know threatened that you know Garrett will kill again and so he he goes along with the he, he's hired by this secret government agency to work with the clone in order to stop Garrett and he hates this partnership because he's certain that the clone is the same. It's just a matter of time before the killer instinct takes over. And he thus abuses the clone and is called out for, for doing so. And yeah, you know, the, the movie does, you know, is he right? Will this kind of will the clone turn out to be dangerous and as we have this kind of thing you know a, a killer hunted by a cop working with a killer although here it's a presumptive killer it's somewhat like Sounds of the Lambs if Jodie Foster was an angry retnik and Anthony Hopkins was a dense meathead who could do flying kicks and nothing else some of noted there are times where this is, you know, kind of a cheesy buddy cop film. At one point, this was supposed to star James Woods and Jennifer Lopez. I can hardly imagine that. Although, I've, James Woods would be fun in the Michael Brogan. When is James Woods not fun? Still don't quite see it. The, the movie is just okay, 
it is more of a thriller than an action movie, as others have noted. The you know the action scenes are well staged and well rehearsed, and you know even I, th I think it was like forty at this point. Van Damme could still you know and still to this day you know can do these you know one eighty degree splits and gymnastic moves, making it look easy. And there, you know, the there are some really great action scenes, but they, you know, there probably there should have been more. They could have been better, and they should have been longer. And the movie is also not quite as fast paced as it probably should be. And others have noted that it's not realistic, but it is quite cool. It's nerve wracking. There's one point where Jake is trying to find, you know, they're they're tracking the the government agency, and of course the the cop or you know ex cop hates working with the feds. You know, they're always and he is kind. Of, we we see him with his like former, you know, boss, and so we I believe we yeah. There's even one scene before he retires with his and he is the the you know cop who doesn't play by the rules he you know he hates working with these feds and the feds are tracking them and he's like they didn't put the tracking device in the car they put no the tracking device is somewhere inside of the clone and I'm having like Universal Soldier flashbacks, you know, look for something hard. There are some some fights with like props as weapons, you know, improvised weapons. And there's this one bit where they're in a, a kitchen, and I mean, one one of you know it's it's like a restaurant kitchen so you know there are a bunch of chefs and most of them are just getting tossed around or like rag dolls but one of them is like trying to fight back and he he already had it in his hand so it's not like he grabbed this thinking it was good but it's it's essentially a metal spatula it's it's not like sharp or heavy or anything and it's just yeah, and then there's this other part where, I mean, the guy was using the vacuum cleaner. So, again, it's not the case of he looked at it. But nevertheless, he, like, holds it as if he's going to, like, swing it or block the other guy. And it's just like, it, that one is at least, you could you could get some weight behind the thing. But, you know, you know it's, it's the, the, I don't know, you know, the, the, the pipe itself you could maybe use, but you know the the thing itself is heavy. You're not gonna get that like swinging in the air or something to get any kind of yeah. That's yeah. And there are times where Garot really doesn't seem as patient as he's made out to be. You know, he there's this one part where he attacks someone during the day, and then he has to you know. And get rid of the people who spot him doing that. They do get some really good humor out of basically, you know, with the mind of a child, the clone is really just doing and saying what he sees other people do and say. So there's there's this one part where he he's hungry, and so you know the the food is good, and he's like. He sees the dog go and eat out of its dog bowl, and he doesn't know any better. So he just he puts his hand, you know, grabs one of them and, and puts it in his mouth, and they got this reaction shot of the dog, and it's like, so that just happened. It's it's. I'm I'm normally not the kind of person who really, you know, it can be amusing enough, but like you know, okay, you you trained an animal to look surprised or whatever but here it's just so underplayed and it's the one time like they don't make a big deal out of this dog it's just it it you know it walks in it's 
it's gonna eat. But just the, you know, it's it's like it looks up and just okay, and and other times he's just he's not real good at the whole. He doesn't know what's socially acceptable and what isn't. So, you know, when Jake takes him to a house that's you know for sale and the you know the the real the realtor she's like you know oh it's way below market value yeah cuz someone was torched to death in there that's that's why it's you know so he's taking the clone there to jog some, some memories and like when he you know he he drives them there then he gets out of the car opens the door and and the clone is like you know really really anxious and he's like just come on and like you know then they go and say hi to the realtor and when she shakes hands with the clone then he repeats like just and, and and you know Jake has you know uh he's 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 special he's you know and yeah they they and you know when the when the clone and Garrett first meet, it feels like they're looking in a mirror, only not. There is not a lot of like futuristic kind of, you know, it, it has the, the sci-fi thing of the clone. They, you know, they, they say very early on, you know, it took God six days to make man. It took us a little longer, you know. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it didn't take God six. I, I'm pretty sure he just did it on the sixth day. He just, you know, the first five days he was creating other things, but whatever. For some reason, the the triggered memories and flashbacks are in third person. I, a lot of them, not some some of them are in first person, which you'd expect, but yeah. And like Garrett you know, he has these these issues. I'm not gonna spoil exactly what, but basically, you know so he he Yeah, I believe the first time he says it, it's it's very early yeah, he says it to his first victim in the first like five or ten minutes of the film. He he likes to target women who you know, he'll he'll go up to them and say, You're a bad mother. I'm just Shut your mouth! He's not even talking about Shaft. The movie is 91 minutes, not counting the end credits, and 95 width. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.